it's yeah. fine. Okay, um, welcome to our uh, session today. Um, my name is Rose Lee and we've got Amanda Picard. We're going to do a bit of introduction in a minute or two. Um, I am actually on the browser version of Teams, which is not what I am used to. I'm having computer problems. So please forgive me if things aren't quite as say, smooth maybe as they should be. I'm also not going to start the PowerPoint. I'm deliberately leaving it in the edit mode because I can see a bit clearer and I don't feel quite so isolated. So um, we've had, uh, hopefully a few, I can't see the chat at the moment, so hopefully we've had a few people saying what their, their superpower would be, and mine would be flight, because I just like, I love being in planes looking down in the earth, so I would just want to be able to see everything um, down below me, so that's much more preferable to invisibility. Um, Okay, so today we're going to talk about Office 365 tools um, within GLOW. There is, obviously, there's full Office 365 and we have the GLOW version of Office 365, of which there are uh, some differences. We're going to cover the apps, not all of them, um, because there's quite a few of them. We're going to give you some top tips about using the apps. And we're also going to have a wee look at the Microsoft Educator Centre. But first, our introductions. Uh, my name is Rose and I'm a Digital Development Officer in North Ayrshire Council in the Education Department. I'm an MIE expert. I've been that for five years and I'm also one of the two fellows in Scotland, along with Sarah Clark from Queen Anne High School. Um, and that's my uh, hobbies there and singing. I said when allowed again because my choir haven't met since February 2020 and we keep saying one of these days we'll be allowed to sing again. That would be nice. So, over to Amanda. Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming along. My name is Amanda Pickard. I am a primary school teacher and during lockdown I was teaching P1 which was very interesting but brilliant. Um, at the moment, I'm on a secondment as a digital learning development officer in my local authority um, and I'm an MIE expert. This is my third year and I am also a powerlifting, crocheting, book reading human to a menagerie of different kinds of animals. I have a dog and some cats and a budgie and a chicken and various other fluffy creatures. And, and that is me. OK, thank you, Amanda. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, have a wee, um, I was going to say a wee shot, a wee game, it's not a game. Um, we're going to use Mentimeter and if you use the QR code that's there on the screen, you will be able to access the Mentimeter and I'm actually going to stop sharing and hand over to Amanda who has the Mentimeter all set up. So if you want to Perfect. Have a wee look at that QR code, take a wee um, image of it, and then we'll get started with that. I've also put the link in the chat. There so, we go. So you can go. choose the link or the QR code. Let me just share my screen. So we'll have a wee look at the results. Three things you already know about Office 365. What do you already know about Office 365? I always get worried about this. I always sit and wait looking at a blank screen, hoping that people are going to enter what they know. Hopefully it's working. I always find it takes a wee bit of time. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I should have uh, taken a screenshot of the code as well. Oh, a minefield. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Collaboration. Absolutely powerful. Definitely. Yeah. Sometimes I think a lot of people feel like it's a minefield. There's a lot in it and it's difficult sometimes to know where to to start. So I totally understand that. Definitely collaboration. I use lots of the tools for collaborating and super powerful. Yeah. Easy editing. Yep. PowerPoint. Yes. And collaboration is one of the the um the main things about Office three six five. We've got a couple there. Definitely. Okay. Do you think that's us? Okay. I will go back to sharing the. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Did I stop sharing there? Hold on a second. Let me. Yes. 
All back to you, Rose. Back to me. Okay. So what is Office 365? Um, Office 365 is cloud-based, and which means that everything that you do in Office 365, regardless of where you are working within it, is auto-saved, which is a massive bonus for, um, well, for most of us, particularly for pupils, because uh, gone are the days when I used to go around telling children, remember and save your work, and they didn't, and then they would go away and they would have lost what they'd done. So it, it auto-saves everything and it stores everything in the cloud. You can access um, Office 365 from any device, whether it's a phone, a tablet or a computer. And obviously, whatever work you've done in Office 365, if you've been in your computer, you can move to a tablet or to your phone to continue working on whatever it is that you've been doing. Um, we've had Collaborate there uh, from the Menti, but also it's there's lots of ways to communicate through Office 365 and sharing. Again, it's great for... Um, sharing with working with colleagues, sharing with colleagues and also for um, pupils to, to work together and share whatever it is that they are doing. So a wee bit of information about GLOW. Um, all Scottish staff and pupils are entitled to have a GLOW account. Now some authorities don't, like Edinburgh for example, don't use GLOW. Um, everybody has got an account there, but as I say, they're not always used. Some of the, the private schools don't use it either. Um, if you do not have a GLOW account and you would like one, if you speak to somebody in your school office and if they can't help you, if you go to GLOW Connect website, which if you just Google GLOW Connects, you'll find it. And there's a list of local authority contacts that you could get in touch with to ask for um, your login. It's safeguarded by Education Scotland. Um, if you were teaching during lockdown, you may remember that in, if you were using Teams, that the cameras were not on for pupils. That had to be approved by ADES. And there are lots of things, well, not lots, there's not many things actually now in GLOW that you cannot um, use. There, are, there is no video recording in Teams meetings in GLOW, and there's also no parental access into Teams. For example, if you were in America, you would be able to share with parents what assignments that your pupils had, but we don't have that here, and it's, say, it's for safeguarding reasons. GLOW is a single sign-on to Office 365 and to other various things, uh, various resources, and it may be that you've got Google as well. It's a, it provides a single sign-on, so it's easy for pupils to, um, to sign on and access a variety of tools. GDPR, um, that stops us having quite a few things within Office 365. Again, if you were in America, you might find that within Office 365, you had Flipgrid and various other um, third-party apps. That's not allowed in uh, Scotland unless your authority has done a data privacy impact assessment, which is very, very painful, and most of them haven't done it for these apps. So there's quite a few apps that we cannot, third party apps that we cannot have within um, Glow. And that's the reason it's because of that old, well, it's not old, it's only three years old uh, GDPR. So within Glow, we have, within Office 365 rather, we have various apps, and I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with things like Word and PowerPoint and Excel. There's lots of other things there as well, and we're going to concentrate on four of them tonight. We're going to talk um, a wee bit about four of these um, these apps that are available. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Outlook. We're all using email all the time, and OneDrive for storing um information. So we're going to have a wee look tonight at Forms and Sway and Teams and OneNote. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a wee bit about Forms and then a wee bit about Sway. And Amanda, please feel free to chip in at any point and also remind me about the time, please, because I can talk quite a lot. <laughs> no problem. We don't have maybe too much time. Okay, so forms. This is the page for forms that um, is in your uh, in your Office 365, and you'll see I've got quite a variety of forms there. And what I'm going to do is there's a lot in forms. I'm not going to cover absolutely everything. 
it would take too long and I'm also not going to um, create one from scratch. I'm, I think it's it's probably easier to show you a couple of different ones and explain how they are constructed. In forms, you can either create a new quiz or a new form. And the quiz, as I say, you can create a self-marking quiz and I'm going to show you them second. I'm going to show you a form first of all. Now, in my job, I do a lot of training. In fact, this is my sixth training session this week. Um, for various um, on various different topics, all of three six five. Uh, so I did a session on accessibility, and what I did was I created an evaluation for that session that I did, and it's just a straightforward form. So I'm going to show you that it's not the one I used; it's it's a copy of it. So um, we're going to have a wee look at that first of all. So. That's what my form looks like in the edit mode. So I'm going to show you the preview to let you see what it would look like if um, you were filling that in. It's easier to explain this way. Now you'll see it looks as if there's actually only one question there. So if I choose primary for my education sector, it then opens up the form and it gives me questions there that I can fill in. Now, the reason why there's only one question there at the beginning is because I can do something called branching, which I will show you when we go back into edit mode, because if I chose secondary, I've got another question there that the primary doesn't. And it's because I want to know what subject the secondary person teaches. If I didn't use branching, the primary teachers would then say, please state your subject. And that doesn't really make sense for a primary teacher. So that's why... Um, initially there was the only there was only the one question so if I go back to my um, edit screen I can see here that um, I've got all my questions there but before I do that I'm going to talk a wee bit about the title so this is the title here and if I just click on it I can change my title I can add a photograph into the title if I want and if I add a photograph into the title I can also format the the title as well. I can change the colour. This is a, a box that you can put either an instruction in or um, some information in. And as you can see, I have put responses that are anonymous. When I do an evaluation, I don't want people to, I want people to fill it in. And people tend to want to fill things in if they, their names aren't on them. So it tells them there it's anonymous. It might be that you want to put a privacy statement in that, that box or some other kind of information. So if I go down to my questions, if I click on the question, now if you remember, I just I said there was a, a, a branching here from question one. If I click on my wee ellipsis here, my three wee dots, and go click add branching, you will see exactly what I mean. So what I have done there is I've told the form that if the respondent clicks primary, they go to question three. If the respondent clicks secondary, they go to question two. And that's my way of branching the form so that people are answering the correct questions. So type of questions I can have, I've got the tick boxes here. This one here, I've added um, a text box because I want somebody, the people to tell me uh, maybe a sentence. I've got some tick boxes here and they are a, the person can tick as many as they like here. Same with this one. There's another one that's, or another two rather, that are long answers. And this one here is called a Likert scale. So we can ask people to rate statements from one to five. Um, and if I go down here to add new, I will show you what happens when you add a new. Um, of course, it's hidden there by the uh, sharing my screen. You choose, do you want it to be a choice? So do you want it to be like the question number one? Do you want it to be a text box like this one? It could be a rating where it's um, thumbs up or numbers. You could be a, it could be a date, and you've also got other options here. There's the like up there, the one that we that we looked at a minute ago. We can have a ranking question, so you can put some, you could put five options and ask them to rank them in some kind of order, and also we can do a file upload now. I'll talk more about that in a minute or two when I talk about sharing. We can also do sections. We can put sections into the, the form if we want. So if we added a new one and we chose choice, then we've got the ability to put in a question. And we can 
it always defaults to two options and we can add other options. And depending on your question, sometimes it prompts you to um, it prompts you with answers and it might be that you want to use them. You can also choose multiple answers, which is what I did, obviously, for the ones where I wanted people to tell me how many of the accessibility tools they'd used. I make everything required. If it's a required question, you'll get the wee red star. If it's not a required question, it means that people can leave it out and I want them to answer absolutely everything in my um, in my form. So that's how to create the form. I'm going to quickly show you now responses. And I filled th three responses in earlier on today. And you can see I've got a pie chart there and I've got the um, the numbers. I've got the answers there to my subject. I've got numbers. I've got bar charts and so on. And I've just got a whole lot of rubbish because I just typed rubbish on my keyboard uh, for the responses. That's my Likert uh, scale answer there. And if I go up to the top here, I can see that I can actually open it in Excel. Now, to save a bit of time, I've already opened that in Excel earlier. And if I go to Excel and show you that, it tells me that when the person started it, when they finished it, their email and all their answers. Now, remember I said about the um, about the file upload and the fact I've got a name here. That's because this has not been shared widely. If I go up to the share button up here, I can share it with only people in my organisation, which is Glow. So anybody within Glow can respond to that. And because I've shared it in that way, it's going to record names. Now, I know I said their responses are anonymous. I actually set that form up as anyone can respond. So if you choose anyone can respond, it does not collect email addresses or names. And that's the way that I it distributed that form uh, to people uh, yesterday. So anyone can respond. What I can do is I can copy the URL for it. I always choose the shortened URL because it gives you a much shorter URL, copy it, and I can then send it in an email. Because it's it's public, it's anybody can respond. I can put the link onto Twitter if I wanted people to respond to a survey. I can send it out in an email. I can text it. I've also got a QR code for that if I wanted to share the form by QR code. And quite a lot of schools do that where they, um, they put a QR code up and parents or children can scan the QR code. I can also get a link to duplicate so I can give it to my fellow um, co uh, to my colleagues and I can also get a link to collaborate as well uh, so the person can can share with a colleague to actually work on the form. Now if I go up to settings here at the moment I've got anybody can respond I've got when it can be when we can start the form when we can close the form and so on. And if I change it to only people in my organisation, there's the bit where record name, I can take that off there as well. I can um, limit it to one response per person and I can customise a thank you message. So I'm going to go back to my forms because I'm aware of time and I'm going to show you one that's a quiz. Rose, can I just jump in? We've had yes. a good comment in the chat. Yep. Um, how easy would it be to transfer the graphs over to another Office 365 application? I just said that the results are easily opened in Excel and I usually actually put in my own graphs depending on what I'm looking for from the results um, or I usually either that or print out in as a PDF. Yep, um, I actually, sometimes I've used the graph, I've actually just taken a screenshot of the graphs to put them into another document. Um, it's just been a bit a bit easier to do that. Um, but you can you can print the uh, the results out there um, and it's see it's in the, the Excel file. It depends how many questions you've got. Sometimes your Excel file could go on forever, depending on the way people have answered. So um it's just it depends whatever you want to use the um the form for. This is when, as I say, that Sarah Clark shared with me, and this is when she did for her, her higher human biology. And you can see that this time it looks slightly different. If I show you the preview, it actually looks like that. So that's what the form looks like. You can see she's got some tables and some diagrams in there. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what these things are because I didn't do biology at school. So um, apologies for that. I don't know anything about that at all. 
if I go back to the edit form, you will notice that, um, sorry, apologies for that, that there is actually a correct answer. And that's what I mean by self-marking. If you create a quiz, instead of a form, if you do create quiz, then you can actually see what the correct answer is. And Sarah's also given a comment that possibly that's a direction to go to that human uh, biology paper one and do question three. Um, so you'll see the green tick, where the green tick is beside the answer, the correct answer. Now, if I go over here to settings, you will see that up here, Sarah has chosen to give the results automatically. So that means that the pupils will get the results. As soon as they've done the quiz, they'll get the results automatically. It will tell them what their score is. And again, it's only people in an organisation which is going to record the pupil's name for her. Um, and the other thing up here is I was talking earlier on about sharing, again, the link to duplicate. Sarah was saying to me today that what they do in their, her department is they've got a, a document, a shared document for the department and all the links to duplicate are there so that all the staff in her department can use each other's forms. Now, if you do share, to du uh, share a link to duplicate, it does not take the responses over because you'll see that's how Sarah shared this with me today and there are no responses in that form. So all the data that you've collected for your particular form is quite safe. It's not getting shared anywhere. The other thing, I think maybe the last thing here is we can add the theme and you can see Sarah's chosen her own picture, which you can do by um, adding. That's She's added her own image into the, um, into the form there. Okay. Amanda, is there anything else about forms? You can think um, of. Just what I just said was saying, you know, it's, it saves so much time when you're setting a quiz, create a yeah. quiz, set the correct answers and add comments for correct and incorrect answers. And then you can potentially set a branching question. So if a learner has got a question wrong, it directs them to like another bit of information. So a, a video with a teaching point to actually address that um, misunderstanding at the time. So there's so much potential in quizzes and forms. Um, the only other thing on top of that, uh, accessibility, it's got oh, immersive reader built in. I should have pointed that out. I'll go back to the, the form. We'll do the preview. And there it's there. Where you see that sign, it will allow you access to immersive reader. So the question comes up and you could play, you could have the question read out to you. And this one's been split into syllables and it's also showing um, parts of speech as well. So it's got full immersive reader capabilities within the form. The other thing I think, just something Amanda said there reminded me, if you're making up these forms and you've made a form, rather than reinventing the wheel and make, creating another form again, sometimes you can copy your form and you can just change some of the questions around. And it might be for maths, for example, you'd just be changing certain numbers to make it a wee bit different. So it's, um, they're, they're great, they're, they save a lot of time. It's um, maybe a wee bit of time to set them up initially, but they are very, very good. And as I say, they're self-marking and pupils do respond really well to them. So that was forms. Am I doing okay for time, Amanda? You're not too bad. That's just half past four. But I was also going to mention about forms. You can actually do like a quiz, a quick quiz um, in Teams chat. If you add forms, you can set, you know, one quick question and it actually saves that into your forms as well. And you can also um, create a quick maths quiz in OneNote. Um, when you, if you're a maths teacher, it's a really powerful way of quickly creating a maths quiz. And again, it saves that quick, quickly created maths quiz into your form, so you can always find it and use it again. Okay. So now we're moving on to SWE, and you can see here these are these are SWEs that I have. Uh, created and it's not all of them because it only lets me see the first few that I've, that I've created. Um, I use them for all sorts of things. I have used them for, you will see 
there's a newsletter, there's just information for probationers. Um, that one is all about Teams. It's got embedded videos in it for people to, uh, to find out how to use Teams. So useful for all sorts of things. Now, the easiest way, I think, again, to, uh, what I'm going to do here is create one. I'm going to start one from a topic because if I create a new one, um, it's we don't have an awful lot of time to do this. So I'm going to start from a topic, which you can do. You can also start from a document. If you've got a document, then um, a Word document, for example, with information, you can do that. That requires a wee bit of editing in your part, but you, it is possible to do that. So I'm going to start from a topic. And the topic I am going to choose is Henry VIII and ask it to create an outline. And hopefully it will do that quickly. It's taking a wee bit of time for some reason. So what SWE is, is a presentation software. It is, um, I really, really like it. You can embed all sorts of things into it. Um, and you can share these publicly as well. And again, I use these quite often for the information sharing. You can, um, I think, Amanda, you, you used them during lockdown, didn't you, to give um, pupils resources and, and lessons? Yeah, I cur curated an entire lesson in a sway. So I would put in um, like the topic title and then I would add in the information about my teaching points and I can add in a video and I can record my voice and then um, pictures and text. So it allowed me just to curate the whole lesson and then quickly and easily send that out to my class. Uh, just using a URL so I could actually share that with parents and families because they were only we. Okay, thank you. Now, it's asking me what I, I mean here. Do I mean Henry VII or Edward? I don't know why it's picked up Edward. I mean Henry VIII of England, please. I would like an outline on Henry VIII of England. So what this is going to do, it's going to, it's creating me a sway on Henry VIII and it's given me the structure or a structure that it thinks that I might quite like. Now, it looks a bit odd there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, play it to actually let you see what it, it's going to look like. And it's chosen black with white text, which I actually don't really like. So I would need to change that. And what it's done is it's created it horizontally. You can either have it horizontally or vertically. It's put some pictures into it for me. And it's given me some headings. So, oops, Henry VIII, sorry, that was me doing that. So I'm going to go back to, um, this is what's called the storyline. And this is where you put your text in. So you'll be able to see the pictures aren't shown up here in the, the, uh, the edit version, but obviously there's one there popped up that was showing in the, when we, we played it. So what we have, is we can have lots of different cards. We can add cards. This is a text card and it's saying here to add some text. You'll see that there's grey boxes round this bit, a grey box round here and then down there we can have sections within this. So we can use heading cards. There's a heading card, we'll get an image card, we'll get text cards and we build this up simply by adding, and this is actually quite a long one, I believe, it's quite long here. Um, we build this up, it's got references there at the end as well if you wanted to use these actual pictures. So I build up my sway and I basically just add whatever I want. I can have a heading card, text image, I can display my images um, in different ways. I've got the ability to add video, audio, I can embed things, I can embed a form for example in my uh, sway and I can upload other documents and things into my sway. To design it, it's, um, there we go, it's storyline and design. So design, I need to go along here and I look at styles and I really don't like that black and white so I'm going to change it and I like purple so I'm going to change it to purple and you can see we've got some background uh, pattern there as well. I also don't like a horizontal sway. I always do my sways vertically. I much prefer them vertically. I could have them as uh, slides, which will give each one 
separately. Horizontally, we're looking at there, it gave you a bit of um, the next slide. It gives you a wee bit of the next one. Let's just see a wee preview, but I prefer them to be vertical, but you can choose from a whole range of different colours. You can also customise your uh, colours. You can customise your font. So we could choose, I quite like that font. There we go. Um, I can make the text size large. I'll just leave it at normal just now. And it also sometimes the animations will actually move. Um, they'll, they'll sort of move. The, it's actually a bit odd because sometimes they make you feel a wee bit, um, a wee bit strange. It can give you a, have a wee sort of um, motion sickness moment with them. There's also the ability to remix, and if you click remix, it will it will choose a theme for you, and it will you can sort of play about with remix, and um, it will just change all the, the the styles of it for you. So let's go back to the storyline and let's now see what that looks like. And there we go. We've got these headings there and obviously we would have information within there and I can go up and down with the sway instead of um, going across the way because I personally, I prefer to read my sways like that. Now we can see Henry VIII's picture's a bit odd there. So let's go back and see why that is. In fact, should maybe have taken a note of where that was. In fact, what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll just pick a picture. So we've got a picture here and we've got focus points. So the focus points, it's saying what is important and I want the whole image to be important because what it will do is it will pick the best, as it says there, pick the best layout um, for you and it will pick the part of the photograph that it thinks that you want to see. So if you choose the whole image is important, you will see the whole image. That one's obviously set for just a bit of the image. So it's entirely customizable and it's entirely up to you what you do with your Sway. Um, as I say, these are great. I'm going to go back to Sway and I'm going to quickly show you. Um, there's one that I was actually just using yesterday. This is when I did I did my presentation on accessibility and then I created this as a resource. So I've got lots of diagrams there. I've got screenshots. I've got information about accessibility, about all the different accessibility features within, um, within Office 365. Again, if I go back and we'll see what else I can show there. Um, this one was when I did an iPads and that was showing people, again, I was explaining to people um, about looking after the iPads and some screenshots and so on, annotated screenshots. So you can see they all look quite different from each other. So it's entirely up to you what you do with them. And also one other thing that I used it for, and I'll not show you because we don't have time. I actually created a, when I started one and I used it for digital storytelling and it, it went around seven different schools within the week and they all had a half a day each to add to the story and they created a story within this way and they also added photographs into it or pictures into it. So it was actually quite a nice, um, it was a nice way to have a bit of collaboration going on across schools and we actually did it across four different authorities as well so there's lots and lots of uses for sway um amanda anything else i'm busy typing lots of information into the chat just as you're speaking and um, so one of the things that i love to do is actually have uh, my pupils collaborate on the one sway so they can all be working in their own on their own devices but actually working in the same sway um, there's only one thing to really remember it. If you just do a sway and then share it with them, you can have up to 10 pupils working in the, the same sway. So I usually like set a card and say, this is your sway. So green group, you're working on this card in the sway and um, blue group, you're look, working on this card in the sway. So they really know which bits that they're actually editing and adding to. So you can have up to 10 different pupils working um, at the same time on the same sway. You actually just reminded me that I didn't talk about sharing. Again, it's like the forms, it's those uh, organisation or anyone with a link. So again, that can go out uh, on a tweet. My newsletter sometimes go out on a tweet and you can restrict it to view or edit. 
So I obviously don't want anybody to edit my, my sway if it's an information sway. So I would leave it at view and I can tweet that out. And if it's those in your organisation, it's just people in glow. And you can also limit it to specific people, which you can do with forms as well. And it would ask you to enter the names um, and email addresses of people to, to share that with. Okay, right, so we'll go back to the presentation and our next thing is the Educator Centre and it's over to Amanda to talk about that. Do you want to take control? Yes, I will take control um, in a wee second. I'm just going to leave that slide up. So um, it's really, really important when you come along to sessions like this that you redeem the code. So you can redeem this code on the MEC and I'm going to show you how to do that. If you haven't heard of the MEC, it's the Microsoft Educator Centre. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's got lots of self-paced learning courses, learning paths um, that you can work your way through. You can also... Um, upload the information, the codes that you redeem on the MEC, you can actually put that into your GTCS profile. So the all of that training that you do with Microsoft and tonight is verified by Education Scotland. So it goes towards your professional update. So definitely, definitely do this. We're going to put the code in the chat um, in a wee second. I'm going to first of all show you how I log into the MEC. I'm going to show you two different ways to log into the MEC and I'm going to show you how to redeem your code. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go. I usually use, oh, there we go. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to come out here. I usually use Microsoft Edge to log in to Glow. So I've logged into Glow. This is my personal launch pad um, and I am going to add the MEC tile to my launch pad. Over here is my launch pad. That's my substantive post school. That's my local authority. And this is the Scottish um, launch pad. And in here, this is the tile that you're looking for. If I click the little eye in the top left hand corner, click it once and then add to my launch pad. I want to close that window, go back to my own launch pad. I like to have it in my launch pad and then I can click this. Now it because I've used it a lot, it just remembers my credential. I have logged into the Microsoft Educator Center with my Glow credentials. There is my little icon. There's my um, Glow credentials there. I can look at my profile, uh, redeem achievement code or sign out. So tonight you are going to click on this redeem achievement code and you literally just paste the, the achievement code in here and redeem it. And when you go to your profile, you can see everything. These are all the courses. During the first lockdown, it became my hobby. So I've done a few. Um, these are all the courses that I've completed in the Microsoft Educator Center. There's literally everything that you could think of, how to use the tools, but also the pedagogy underpinning why we should use the tools in the Microsoft Suite, Office 365. So there's so many amazing courses. Um, 21st century learning design is an amazing one. It's huge. It took ages, but I would definitely recommend it. Um, there is definitely lots of individual courses on Sway and Forms and the other things that we're talking about tonight. When you redeem your code for tonight, you should achieve certified Microsoft Innovative Educator status. And if you click on your details and view your certificate, take a little screenshot of this, stick it up on Twitter, tag Ros and I and ta Tablet Academy. We would definitely give you a wee follow and a wee like. That is a good achievement to have. So that's a really lovely thing to do. So definitely, definitely make sure you redeem your code for tonight. So that's the first way that I log in to my Educator Centre is logging in through Glow. Or alternatively, you can just search for Microsoft Educator Centre Click on it. Again, it remembers me because I use it a lot. And um, you do the same thing, exactly the same thing. Click on redeem achievement code, put in your achievement code, redeem it. Then make sure you upload that to your GTCS profile. It's really important and it's verified. So it's really a um, good way to keep track of your CLPL for the year. If you haven't been on the Microsoft Educator Center before, um, there's this is what it looks like. This is kind of your landing page um, there's lots of information here 
And I know one of the things that we had on the main team was that it's a minefield. And this might look like a minefield, but it's actually mm -hmm. really simple. You can click into training. You can go to courses, learning paths, webinars and online events. Learning paths was my favourite thing in lockdown. But you can click onto courses. All that the learning paths are is just a group of courses that have been bundled together to make a learning path. So um, I just did all the learning paths. You can search for activity type, course, learning path, resource or lesson plan, the difficulty. If you've started it, the great thing about the MEC is you don't have to sit down for an hour and start a course and finish it in the same session. You can do a little bit and that's how I started. I would do maybe five or ten minutes at lunchtime and the MEC actually saves your progress. So, you know, you can search on things that you have started or in progress or completed. You can search on the subject or the age group instructional practice, duration or product. So if you're particularly interested in Sway, for example, you could click on Sway and it will show you all of the courses that are to do with Sway. There's a good one, Digital Sto Storytelling with Microsoft Sway. Um, I tend to just search on learning paths and I'm going to come out of courses and there are 32 results for learning paths. Um, I don't have any that I've not started. I've done them all. Um, so I've requested Microsoft to give me more um, if I look at completed. So I've done all 34 of them. So definitely highly recommend going into training in the MEC, pop in, have a little look, try a few courses. But for tonight, make sure you redeem that achievement code. And uh, Rose, did you pop the yeah, code? Yeah, put it into the chat. That's amazing, fantastic. So very quickly, again, log into the MEC, search for it, log in. You can sign up with your own personal email or your, I use my Glow credentials. Um, make sure you click on your little person up here, click on redeem achievement code, enter the code, click on redeem, and then, so you don't forget, straight onto the GTCS prof, uh, website, go into your profile and put in the information that you've got you can even, if I go into my profile, view your transcript. So let me see if this will go. This will give me a PDF of all the courses that I've done on the MEC, plus any of the sort of sessions like Rose and I are doing for tonight. All of that is on my, this is a PDF of my transcript of absolutely everything I've done. Um, I think it's right at the very, very bottom. There's a few pages. Close your eyes while I'm doing this um, and it should show me some that I've just redeemed the code. No, I can't find them. Custom training. These are the things that I've been along to custom training, how long they lasted for. And I've just redeemed these codes. So it's really important to redeem your code for tonight. So that takes us up to about 10 to 5, which is Pretty good. I'm going to stop sharing. Roz is going to share the next slide, I think, um, because it's also really important to make sure we are looking after our health and well-being. And it's not a great thing to do to sit for a couple of hours in front of a laptop at the end of a, a hard day. Um, so we're going to take a little break, 15 minute break. So make sure you get up, do some breathing, moving, get a drink, go to the loo, have a biscuit, um, maybe have log into Glow, have a wee look at Office 365. Um, on my lunch pad, you'll have seen I had the tile for Office 365 in there. That's how I access all the apps. Um, and we'll see you back here in about 15 minutes. So let's say five past five. Um, so go redeem your code get a cup of tea, get a wee biscuit, let me know what kind of biscuit you're having in the chat and um, I can have Biscuit Envy and we'll see you back here in 15 minutes.
Hello, so it's five past. If you're back, can you please um, tell me what kind of biscuit or drink that you had in the break in the chat so I know that you're here and we can get started again. I did not really have a biscuit. I had a delicious fulfilled chocolate peanut butter bar. Tino biscuits. Oh my goodness me. That's very good, Lynn. Are you saving yourself for your dinner, your tea? Lovely pack of animal biscuits. I didn't know you could still get those. Those are the ones with the wee animal shapes with chocolate on one side. Yummy. What about you, Rose? What did you have? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, I've I had some water and I also got my app to work, so I'm a lot happier. Because I can now it's now looking the way that it should look. Because I haven't used the browser version of this probably. Well, I've have used it occasionally, but not for a long time. So it was a bit a bit strange there. So I feel a lot happier. Everything's where it should be. <laughs> Good, and you've got a beautiful background as well. Yes. Yes, at last. OK, so hopefully we're all back. We've heard of Tino Biscuits, water, a lovely pack of animal biscuits, and I've been full out. But I didn't ha I've been very busy all day running around. Partner making a lovely curry. Oh, oh nice, Lynn. I'm jealous. <laughs> what kind of curry it is. Mm, very nice. Oh, there's Pam. Hello, Pam. OK, so um, welcome back, everybody. We're going to keep going and talking about Office 365 tools within um, Glow. I am going to do a small little demonstration about Teams and OneNote class notebook. Um, so if you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, Ros will shout out to me if I'm going too fast. And um, oh, I like that the three wee dots are happening in the chat at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to see. I have to go and stop. See you later, Pam. Bye, Pam. Right. So let me share my screen. And let me just check and make sure. Oh, I'm going to come out here because I want to show you what I'm doing from the very beginning. OK, so here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this works easy peasy. Here we go. So I have logged into Glow. This is my launch pad. On my launch pad, I have um, the Office 365 tile. Um, you can get that by searching Office 365, Office 365 from other launch pads and then adding it to your own launch pad. There are also tiles. If I go in here and I'll just put in Microsoft. There are tiles for the various apps as well. So Microsoft Teams and Forms and Yammer and SharePoint and don't forget you've got a download Office 365, um, which is free. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ros, but it's five devices, no, five mobile devices, five computers. I think it's up to 15 devices. Yeah, it's 15 now. Yeah, 15 devices. It's now 15. 15 devices you can download Office 365 onto. So that is definitely winning there when you sign into Glow. Um, so I just use this one tile. I just think it keeps it nice and neat and tidy. So I added Office 365 and when I click on it, it takes me to my Office 365 launch pad. And here are the things that I've been working on recently. These are files that I was looking for in shading. Um, I did a little session on Dictate and Immersive Reader and Translate today. And um, so that's what that's about. Down on the left hand side are all of the apps that I regularly use in Office 365, but there's a little icon down here that says all apps. I don't know what it looks like, a little building block with a, a naughty block here. And you can see all the apps that are in the Office 365 suite. And then lots of apps that we don't have access to in Glow because as Rose had mentioned earlier, DPIA paperwork needs to be done and to um, make sure that we are following GDPR guidance and rules. So I am going to zip straight into Teams um, as a primary school teacher and as a teacher who teaches little ones. I always talk about the shapes and the colours and the letters of the apps. So Teams is a purple one, looks like two little people with a T on it, a big capital T, and I'm just going to click it. 
and you'll take me straight into my launch pad of the teams that I am either an owner of or a member. And I'm going to quickly create a new team just to show you how it's done. So up here in the top right hand corner, there's a button that says join or create a team. And then here's another little purple button, create a team. If you had a join code, somebody gives you a join code, they've created a team and they say, if you want to come along and join, you enter the join code here and then join the team. But we're going to create a team. There are four different kinds of teams that you can create. Class is what self-explanatory. It's when you are working with a group of pupils and teachers and they're collaborating together and sharing work, you would use a class a team. There's a professional learning community and that is if you are working possibly in a working party um, to develop a, an area of the curriculum or you've got a special project, you might have a professional learning community team. Um, there's a staff team and that would be for your senior leadership uh, working with their team um, of teachers and then other and other is the one team that I have not used and I think that no. possibly this is the one team that you can have pupils and teachers working together with equal rights but I haven't actually used it I have used the other three and there's a few differences but nothing too major it's actually more to do with one note class notebook or one note PLC one note or staff notebook um, but they're all one notes so we're going to tonight create a class team and it's super duper easy it says teachers are owners of class teams and students participate as members each class team allows you to create assignments and quizzes record student feedback and give your students a private space for notes in class notebook my advice I always give to um, the teachers that I work with in my training sessions is when you name a team, make it super obvious who you are because we're in GLOW and GLOW is a national um, sort of place that we all are in Scotland. So if um, I think the first team I created, it was Primary 1B and then I realised, I wondered actually how many Primary 1Bs there were in Scotland. So I always put in um, my school name, um, my teacher name, my class name, so whatever that is, I might just put in P1B. I'm usually primary one brilliant, P1B and the year. So this year is 21-22. And that is because if there are any problems with your team at all and we have to go and speak to somebody in the help desk, then we can say it's this team. School name, my name, primary one B, 21-22 there's unlikely to be very many of them or at all if there is in another one that would be a miracle. So I don't tend to put in a description and I'm not going to worry about creating a team using an existing team as a template. I'm creating a brand new team and then I click next. And then Microsoft Teams goes away and does everything exciting for me. So this is when you can immediately enter students and teachers. I'm going to enter Put in Ros, I think you are G W O nine. O nine? Yes. And then you are Lee. There you are. Yes, she, she is. Is. And Ros is going to be my student today. And I'm going to click add. Um, you did have an option to skip there. Uh, the other top top I would say is don't ever be the only teacher or the only owner of your team. I have um always put in all of my senior leadership team, my stage partner, if anybody's covering my my class, then I would add them into my team. Um, I was off ill a couple of years ago and I added in the teacher that was covering my class. Uh, so I just added her into the team. She was just a temporary member of the school, but I had added her in there as a teacher, so she had access to everything. So I'm just gonna leave it with my one student. Thank you, Rosalind. And I'm gonna click on close. And it instantly pops up. This is my team. It's empty. There's nothing much in it, but it gives you a template of what a team should be. Because it's a class team, I get a class notebook. We have uh, assignments, grades and insights, and then we have channels. So this is just a heading here and every team has a general channel. The general channel is standard. You can't change the name of it, you can't edit the name of it, it's there, it's always at the top of the list of all the channels that you might create. Um, this is this place where we post conversations or announcements and we also have files. 
and Teams sets up uh, files, class materials, that's standard. It's a folder that I can put in resources that pupils can have a look at, but they can't edit, they can't delete either. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, so that's the kind of basic outline of Teams, and I'm going to show you a couple of things very, very quickly before I go and set up my class notebook, which is not set up at the moment. Um, I always change my little team tile. Um, you see a little pencil here, and I change my team picture. There are lots of lovely standard options from Microsoft, um, which are lovely, lovely. Let me see which one. I'm going to have a little fire and click on update, or you can design your own. Um, during the first lockdown, I actually had my class um, draw a picture and then they sent me the photograph and then I actually uploaded their picture as my team. I don't know why that didn't work there. Sometimes it doesn't work immediately, Amanda. I've discovered that, that it doesn't always put it in straight away. That's annoying. I'll have a little trailer yep. then and let's see if that one does. There it is. Oh, yes. now I've got a fire and I've got a little trainer. So <laughs> that's hilarious. But there we go. So um, anytime you th see three wee dots, it means there's more options. More options are always good. So you have manage team, add a channel, add a member, leave the team, edit the team, get the link to the team, manage tags and delete the team. If you delete the team, the team is gone. It's gone. We can, with a little bit of difficulty, get it back um, from the help desk. And that is when we need to know the exact name mm -hmm. of your team and when it was deleted. So the date and time, roughly, if we can. It's uh, so, so important. Sorry, Amanda. It's also it's important if you do delete it by mistake to get it reinstated as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, so I am going to manage my team. I'm going to click on my settings. And you can see there's one owner and you can see I have one guest and that's my pupil, Ross. Um, pending requests, we don't have really anything here in Glow. Channels, you can see all I've got is the general channel at the moment. And settings here, I've got a team theme, which is what I changed to a little fire. And now I've got two, which is I've never seen that before. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but again, you can change it here if you wanted. You've got member permissions. Um, allow members to create and update channels. I tend to not change any of these settings at all. Um, the only setting, I'll show you the only setting that I do change um, in a wee second. Guest permissions, we don't have to worry because we don't have guests in Glow. App mentions, I don't change any of these. I, these are all set for you. Team code, if I wanted to, had, if I was working with older pupils and older students, um, maybe in secondary or higher education, I would just generate my team code and I would share that team code with them and then they could join the team themselves rather than me having to enter all their details. Um, the fun stuff, I love the fun stuff. I always leave giffies and stickers and memes and um, mo emojis and things like that on because it's, part of accessibility you know a picture says a thousand words and it's certainly the first thing I always do with my little primary ones when they manage to log in themselves the first thing they do is send me an emoji which they love so I always leave the fun stuff on but you can switch it off if you want one note class notebook um, I'm not going to look at that and tags I'm not going to look at that it just now at the moment so um, analytics it shows there's two users the SharePoint files gives you a bit of information. And obviously, if I have if I had an older team, there would be a lot more information about um, this team in here, engagement and meetings and things like that. So that's all I'm going to look like there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to my general channel immediately because this is one thing that I would say I always, always do. I always manage my channel and I always change this to only owners can post messages in this channel, in the general channel. The first year I didn't do it and the general channel got really, really messy and it was difficult to find any of the information that anybody needed because everybody was posting to the general channel, creating new conversations and new announcements. So everything got lost. So it's much easier if it's only the owners 
and then you can create other channels for other topics or subjects as you need, which can be open for anybody to comment in. So that's the first thing I would definitely say before you do anything else, make sure you just lock down the general channel a little bit so that you've got a nice clean place to make an important announcement. So if I go back up to my three little dots here, I'm going to add a channel. So channels, um, you might have uh, one channel for, um, I don't know, uh, literacy. You might want to focus on literacy or Vikings maybe, or um, it could be um, recycling. You might be doing a topic on recycling. So I might want a channel on recycling. How you make your channels and how you name them, the channels are listed in alphabetical order. I don't always like that. So I always number my channels and I always put the number at the beginning. This, you can actually add in any special characters. Um, oh, there's a full stop, it's worked. Hmm. Normally I can't make a full stop in my channel name, but I'll have a go. And the other thing I like to do is uh, put in a little emoji to make the purpose of the channel a little bit more obvious. Uh, tonight I'm on a MacBook and to get a shortcut into my emoji uh, menu, I do control command and spacebar. If you're on a Windows device, it is the Windows key and full stop. So I'm going to put in recycling. Oh, there we go. Lovely. Perfect. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to automatically show this channel in everyone's channel list. I might want a description. I don't usually put in a description and then I click on add. And there it is. Fantastic. So that is how you quickly add a channel. There's so much to talk about in Teams and, and I'm aware that we're rapidly moving through our minutes tonight. So I'm just going to show you very few things to do. Um, if I go back to my general channel, I'm going to click on new conversation. It's very like social media, other social media platforms. Click on that, you can start a new conversation. And usually my first um, post with any class is, hi, welcome. Please reply with an emoji to let me know you are here. And then I just, oh, I'm going to move over here. There we go, Ross, I've just moved you out the corner. And this little paper airplane is where you send the message, just like that. And then I always teach my uh, students to make sure that they're replying. There's all these options underneath here that we can use. We can attach a file, upload a file from Teams or from OneDrive or from my computer. Here is my little emojis, slightly different from theirs. Oh, there's a go, I like a little cat. I'm gonna have a little cat and we can reply. We also GIFs, hi. I love a GIF. <laughs> Leave the fun stuff on. So there's lots of other options down here. I really love the praise as well. I use praise a lot. Um, and you just have to bear in mind, Teams is for everyone. I, in my head, I think of Teams as my classroom. So everyone has access to everything and everybody um, can see everything. So there's not much that's private in Teams. So anything that's on your team is viewed by every team member. So if you've had something really exciting happen, I've used this praise for birthday celebrations. Um, you can go in and I'm going to praise. There's these standard ones. Let me see. I think, Rose, you've been feeling courageous. Thank very you. courageous tonight. So I can select my <laughs> pupil and I can say, well done tonight. You were amazing. And then you can click on preview. Look at that beautiful send. An entire class gets to see that Rose has received some praise tonight. So I love the praise. I think it's absolutely spot on. So this is quite a small message. There's another two ways to make um, an announcement or start a conversation. And it's with this little icon down here, your A and your pencil. I was about to say ah because I'm used to saying that with little ones and this is where you get to enter a subject and we might be looking at Vikings and please start um, researching when the Vikings lived 
and I can leave it like that. And it just stands out a little bit more because you've got a subheading here. My favourite one, I've always got a favourite one, go back down to this A with a little pencil. Instead of the new conversation, what I want to do is make an announcement and you get a headline. You can change the colour of that background. That's already cool. Mm, I don't like that colour very much. Um, or you can choose a an illustration or upload your own image. Choose an illustration. There are some standard ones given to us by the lovely Microsoft team. If this is going to load. My husband has returned home. He is on the internet upstairs. <laughs> Let me just cancel that and try it again. Choose an illustration. There we go. So there's some standard uh, lovely things to choose from. You can pick different ones. I like this one. I think that one's nice click on done and then you can have a welcome. Oops, welcoming, welcome. And then a subheading and um, it might be. It's nearly the weekend and then what are you planning to do? And then send it like that, just like that. It makes it stand out a little bit more. So there's so many more options in Teams. Um, again, if I hover over here, um, the team members, Roz, she's a pupil. She can come along and she can react to my post. And um, she can click on the three little dots and look at that immersive reader is in there and also translate, which is absolutely fantastic. Immersive reader and translate. I think it's up to 60 languages. Is that right, Roz? Something it's like that. 70. 70 languages. 70, yes, I know because I checked yesterday. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's have a wee look at translate. Is this going to work? No. <laughs> That's not very good. Let's see original message. It didn't do anything. There we go. Fantastic. I'm not quite sure why that's not working. Maybe I'm on the I'm online and usually I'm working in the desktop. So that's a very quick run through of Teams. It is now half past five, so I'm going to move on to have a wee look at OneNote Class Notebook. So OneNote Class Notebook we have it over here. There's this top option. I'm going to click on Class Notebook. And I haven't set it up, so I'm going to set it up right now and it's so easy to do. I'm going to start a new blank notebook. You might want to create one from existing notebook content, and that's what I did for the past two years. I had a template OneNote with all my teacher planner and my resources, and so I created this OneNote from my template. But tonight I'm just going to use a blank notebook. This is standard for a class notebook, a OneNote class notebook. It includes a collaboration space where everybody can work together. I've used this for holidays and we've all um, piled in our news and our pictures and then we wrote a story around all of our adventures. In the content library, this is where you would upload your resources for your um, course or your lessons and it's a place, a storage place where your students can go and find um, the worksheets or information or different resources that they might need. They can edit in there, but they can copy the content from the content library and put it in their own private space. There's a teacher only section, which is where I keep all of my planners, my timetables, my notes, my resources. Everything is in the teacher only section and then every pupil has their own private space. So I'm going to click on next. There's nothing to edit here. I'm just going to click on next. And this is when you get to set up each student's private space. So you can reduce the number of sections. You can rename them very easily. You can add a section. Humorously, just because I'm primary, you might want biology. Uh, Amanda, can I, can I come in here with that? something I discovered? Recently, I renamed sections in a class notebook and when the notebook appears at first, it's got the original name and it's not until you click on it that it actually changes to what I changed it to. And oh, I've wow. no idea why it's doing that, but I just thought uh, the next time I think I do it, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to rename. I don't oh, know, it's, right. it's, it's, as I say, I don't know why it does it. It does it every single time. Um, it's synced properly initially, but it's it sort of goes back to the 
um, to the original one, and it's not until you actually click on it that it does change. That's so interesting. I'm going I'm to be wary of that one. Yeah, in the future. definitely. Little top tip: um, you might have assessments, um, and you can just set up as few or as many as you want because you can add to it later on. So you don't have to worry about what am I going to need all year. You can have just whatever you'd like. So I'm going to take out a few. So that would be my standard. Every pupil in my class are going to have their own section. So, um, and I'm going to click on create. And I think whilst um, that is going to create, I'm going to add another pupil. Yeah, it's creating. There we go. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to add oh, another uh, member. And I'm sure, um, I don't know what her number is. Let me see if I can find, there she is. I'm going to add, I'm sure she won't mind being a student in my team. Close, there we go. So this is my class notebook. It's actually opened up the app, the OneNote class notebook app inside the Teams app. Um, and you can have a wee look at the navigation panels here. There is my team name. Here's my welcome page, my collaboration space, my content library, teacher only, and there's Rose's special section for herself. And it's sorted it. I was thought that was going to be in alphabetical order, but it's not. Assessments, <laughs> numeracy and literacy. Um, and it will need to sync again to make sure that it adds in one for Sarah. Have a look. No, it's not going to sync. But I don't like to work in Class Notebook inside Teams. I always either open it in the browser or I open it in the desktop app. Usually it's in the desktop app. So let me see if I can open it quickly in the desktop app. This was another one I was doing. I'm going to add a notebook and there it is. Opening it up. There we go. So this is entirely editable. This is all editable. So the welcome space, I just say welcome to our class. And I usually delete all of this. This just gives you information about what these sections are. So I'm just going to delete it all. And I usually put in some pictures or a little note or something like that. This page, again, it just gives you lots of information. You can right click on it and delete that page and it's gone. The collaboration space gives you some information about the collaboration space. And again, you can delete that or edit it. This is the content library where again, it gives you information exactly how you can use it. The teacher only space. This is where you keep all your resources, everything. And then every pupil has their own space. I wonder if I could get it to sync. Last sync just now. Not quite sure why it's not syncing. But anyway, it will sync eventually and we'll have two pupils there. So this is very quick. Um, this is a section. I always think of my OneNote class notebook as my um, my jotters, my folders, my digital workbooks. Um, so my teacher only section here is like my big teacher planner file. And I don't know about everybody else, but I constantly lose things out of that folder or I drop it and then the lever arch doesn't work properly. So I got rid of that and I, I put everything in this teacher only section, um, which was absolutely fantastic. So this little arrow here is a section group and this little tab is like the, I keep calling them in-betweeners, but they're dividers in a folder. So you get dividers and then you get section groups. Dividers are sections. This is a section group. And in a section group, you can have as many um, sections as you possibly want. So you can have all sorts of ones. You can do right click on them. You can change the section color. You can rename it. Anything you want. It might be um, uh, far from the madding crowd. Oh, madding crowd. It might be. Uh, a book study, something like that. 
could be anything at all. So um, you would upload all of the resources into your collaboration space for your pupils and students. Everybody would be able to edit in there and work together in the collaboration space. And in the content library, again, you can delete that section, add as many sections as you want. You can rename them. You can change the colors of them. Um, you can, let me see, green and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to put in a um, addition, uh, addition problems. There we go, addition problems. And that would be information about addition and problems and anything that I need the pupils to work on. So there's there's loads and loads and loads in OneNote. You have got these amazing um, menus, home, it almost looks like Word, so there's lots of options about what you can do. Uh, this is one of the things that I've used a lot, the to-do list, and, and I learned a new thing this week because I didn't know you could create your own tags. So these are tags. So you can create your own little to-do list, um, and it might be a phone ROS, organize mente um, and uh, speak to Niall and once so you can make a to-do list for your pupils and they can tick them off as they do them and you can even search on these things as well or if you the other day I was in a meeting and I thought I must remember to do this later so I clicked on important and then in this drop down menu I actually wanted to remember it for later so these are this is a great way of keeping track of to do lists and things um, that are important for you. And it's quite difficult once you've got lots and lots of content in a one note to be able to find things. So that's a great thing to have this. These tags absolutely fab insert. I use insert a lot. You can insert a table. So if I click down here and it's limited in what it does, um, but you can use basic uh, word options for your table um, what else can you do insert files so you can upload uh, files i was uploading let me see if i can see what i've got in here there is a, what is that this is a test document that's a very exciting one it's a word document so i'm going to click on it and i get options to upload to onedrive and insert a link insert as an attachment or insert as a printout I usually do this because I like to see the document as well as have a link to it so I can open the document in Word or online or I can just have a look at it. I don't really need to open it, but I need to have a wee look at it. So I use insert a lot. Printout it is for doing the very same thing um, and click on printout and it will put it in. Um, there we go. There's a printout close this down so that's a PDF and it puts in there you can put in pictures or you can take a screenshot and I'll be put in a link so many things one of my absolute favorite things is audio recording and I use audio recording for feedback so um, if I'm using one note with my little learners and they've written a story or drawn a picture then I can give them feedback so I can click on audio and it starts recording my voice. I love your story. I love your picture. Let's think about how we can make it even even better and then stop it. And then my learners can go back and just listen to that. They can play it back for themselves. It's a great way of giving feedback. So that's um, insert stickers. Who doesn't love a sticker? I love stickers. So there's loads and loads and loads of stickers about all sorts of different things, planets, Anything with a little pencil means that it's editable and I also use these for feedback and you can edit what it says. Amazing work. Well done and then click on done and you can resize these as you like. Um, draw menu if you've got a touch um, screen device, you can actually pick a pen and draw on this you can choose your color of ink or ink color here let me see this more colors there's green you can make it thick uh, 
lots of different options down here. Um, I often have my OneNote class notebook open on my Promethean panel. When I'm teaching little ones, they can practice drawing, they can practice letter formation, number formation. They can go to their own section. Um, so they might have literacy and they're creating a page for themselves and they've actually started writing their names or their letters. Uh, so they use that all the time and then it saves automatically and I can actually see the progress that they're making. You've got selection of markers and highlighters, um, view, immersive reader. If there's anything, let me go back to that. Where's my document? Uh, there we go. Here's one here. If I go into immersive reader, it opens this up in immersive reader and you've got lots and lots of amazing options for accessibility for immersive reader. You can have it read back to you. Choose options about voice speed, male or female. There are text preferences, make the text bigger, change the font, change the background. Oh, I don't like yellow. I prefer this one. You can have grammar options, show labels, get rid of syllables, get rid of labels. I've used this for writing so we can actually identify what the nouns are. And if we're thinking about up leveling or describing things, how many adjectives can you see? How many things are green? None. So let's think about that. Amazing, um, get rid of any sort of distractions. Some line focus, if I switch that off. Picture dictionary, if I click on this, it shows me a little picture. And it also has a translate function. So let me see, I was talking to somebody about Portuguese today. You can do it by word or by the entire document. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Let me take those syllables off. It's not perfect, but it's a really, really good start. And again, it will read out to you in pretty good and you can click back to the original very quickly uh, so um, there's also translate here so it will translate and save it so it's not just going into immersive reader and reading it and then checking accessibility a uh, great thing to make sure that everything is accessible to all learners regardless of um, their ability um, some other things, quick things that I really love to do, changing the background, the paper color, and also the paper style. If you wanted squares or lines, that's another brilliant option. Um, last thing very quickly, in my teacher only section, um, what I have, in fact, I'm gonna show you. Um, I'll go to one of my own ones. So this was my um, planner from last year, and I've anonymized it everything but in my teacher information I have a section group down here yep and I've got some notes about each pupil and I've locked those sections so I've password protected it so I don't necessarily want to share all the information with everybody that's a team owner in my team but I want them to have as much as I possibly want so um, this was just um, something that I just uploaded yesterday so this is nothing to do with any pupils um so that i can keep that private so i'm the only one that knows the password and those areas can be private for me but i can actually share my entire teacher planner very quickly without worrying about oh, i've got my planner at home and i'm not well i can actually just add the teacher who's covering my class to my team they get access to all of my resources um my plans my thing links and um, so i am you can loads of options to embed things into um, OneNote and it's fully accessible. Oh, it helps if I'm not in draw. Oh, here we go. Let me just go in here. So I've embedded um, some ThingLink resources in here and these are fully interactable um, within OneNote, which is how I teach phonics. Uh, so I can share all of that very, very quickly with um, another teacher or a member of my management team. And uh, I think I've covered everything, Roz. Is there anything really important that I've forgotten? I'm trying to go really quickly now. <laughs> I think you've you've covered quite a lot there. I think you've uh, you've uh, managed to to do quite a bit. It's just one note. It's amazing. There's just so many things that you can do yeah. with it. And we were looking there at sways. Uh, you can embed sways into one note yeah. and they actually play within the one note. You, yeah, absolutely. And forms appear in, in this, the window as well. So there's all sorts of other things that you can do 
that can um, that will embed and I, I believe like YouTube I think as well yes please, YouTube as well yeah, yeah. YouTube it's lots and lots of things is. embed beautifully in OneNote yep. these are just a few um, of my OneNote lessons that I had during the first lockdown for primary one so I use this with primary one so I had pictures and these are stickers this is a YouTube um, song and then I had a link in fact I'll just close it over <coughs> For here instructions stickers so um i kind of laid out my one note pages as a sort of learning journey so that was a link to uh, an activity to help um, my wee ones practice with their keyboard skills this was i think this was coding on decomposition and um, lots of pictures and photographs that i just uploaded into my one note page with instructions and now your turn Oh, and I've got, here we go, there was um, one on Health Week, so I put in a QR code, start here, um, things to do, links, PDFs, um, I think there's one in here, I think it's maybe this one, we're writing a story, yep, so I recorded my voice um, speaking the instructions, and there's a link to um, a video, and um, lots of instructions and things like that, just for um, writing a story. So there's lots and lots of different ways about how you can um, lay out your OneNote pages and the content that you can include and embed. So uh, there's it's actually limitless. There's nothing that you can't do. I'm trying to find one that has a wakelet. No, I don't have one that's got a wakelet in it, embedded in it. But yeah, so I'm going to stop there because we've got a little um, quiz for you. We're going to test you. So it's now over to Rose, um, who has got um, hopefully a link for us to have a wee go. Um, I'm going to put the uh, link in here in the. Just. OK, hold on a wee second. Oops, copy. If you click on the link in the chat and then Rose is going to show us a join code. And uh, I can't remember how many questions. Is it 10 questions, Ros? 10 questions. 10 I think, questions. I think I've, I've forgotten to share my audio. You oh, can't that's hear okay. My audio. It's fine because it's actually quite annoying anyway. So we'll be no excited <laughs> I don't mind, with music. I don't mind music. Friends. Right. Support. So I have entered. Oh, I get to choose my own nickname. Amanda. So I'm in, hopefully. Micro Dan, I like that. The Office 365 challenge. Oh, my goodness me. OK, get ready. One. Um, I can access my Office 365 with any device from anywhere at any time. see who's in the lead. Not that I'm competitive at all. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these is not a Microsoft product? PowerPoint, Forms, Sway and Pages. I do like a little quiz. If I am in Outlook Mail, how quickly can I move to Forms? Oh, go back to the Glow Launchpad, click the App Launcher, log out of Glow, click on Account Manager. Oh. I'm not sure. I think Lynn's maybe having some problems. I'm not seeing the questions. Um, so we'll read them out to you, Lynn, because they're on the, if you're using the one device, then I'm flicking between the team screen and the other window that I've got open. And that's how I'm seeing the questions. You can use 
uh, control and tab to flick between the two. Forms allows me to create what? Quizzes and questionnaires, uh, questionnaires, presentations or quizzes and press or quizzes and press presentations. Oh, my teeth are not working. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Dan's in the competition now. Question six. Who can share OneDrive documents with? Who can you share them? Colleagues in your school, anyone, colleagues and pupils in their local authority, any Glow user. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've got one now. OneNotes can be organised by dividers and leaves, dividers and pages, sections and pages, sections and leaves. True or false? Can you can add content to a OneNote offline? We didn't talk about that, but actually I'm going to tell you the answer. You can. True. <laughs> you can and uh, you can sync it later. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. You can actually work on OneNote offline and then sync it later. Question nine, where can you store resources in a team? Class materials, content library and SharePoint site. Oh my goodness me, these are tricky draws. Um, I, I'm going to go for that one. Maybe 10 seconds was a bit too speedy. That was my doing 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. What's the quickest way to add members to your team? Oh God, give the pupils a joy. Green, the green one. Green. Green answer. <laughs> oh, my dear. Oh, oh, my goodness me. Well done, though, everybody. I do like a little quiz. My goodness me. So Roz and I are both members of Team MIEE -E Scotland. There's a hashtag on Twitter, um, but, you know, please, um, feel free to tag us. We've we've got some top tips that we can quickly go through with you, um, Rose. We've got twenty top tips. We tried to pick out the best. Twenty top tips. Um, have you? Sorry, got I'm that? trying to stop this playing oh, music. Music's <laughs> it's it's going now. Sorry. So top tips for Outlook, Rose. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about Outlook when <clears throat> we're talking about the apps. Excuse me, but two top tips there are. If you um, if you're not using Go as your your sort of main email and your authority, set up a forwarding um, from your Go to whatever it is your corporate account, and always create a signature. One thing that really annoys me is people don't put a signature. And if you've got glow.sch.uk as the ending to your email, we don't know where you're coming from unless we, uh, we go and have a look for you. So create a signature to put at the bottom of your email with your school. Forms, um, the, the tips there are using themes, using colours and so on, use your own pictures and look, go and look at the share settings and make sure they're set correctly for whatever it is that you're doing. Um, Sway, uh, you can share to collaborate. As Amanda said, she had children working on the same Sway and investigate the styles, look at lots of different styles there and use be brave and use the remix. I actually never do because I like to have control over what I'm doing, so I don't use it. Um, OneDrive, again, we didn't really mention that, but the, the two things to watch there are to take care when you're sharing. If you are sharing files with colleagues, make sure you're sharing them with the right person and also organise your OneDrive into folders and it just makes it a lot easier for you to find things. Amanda. Top tips for teams. We will um, tweet these two slides so that you can see them because I know we're going really super fast because the time is running out. Teams, number your channels. That way you can control the order that they appear. Um, set your general channel permissions. Lock it down so it's only the owners that get to um, 
announce anything in the general channel. Use emojis, it just makes the purpose of the channel a little bit clearer. Think about accessibility tools, use that immersive reader, have a look at um, Translate. Um, oh, we didn't mention at mention. So you can at mention your individual team members or you can at mention the entire team. So if you're not sure that if anybody is looking um, at the team as often as you'd like them, then just at mention them, at mention their name, they'll come up and then they'll get a little um, nudge in the right way to check the team and then use tabs. I didn't talk about that either because I didn't have enough time, <laughs> but I usually use the tab. I add a tab at the top of my team channel and I might, if I'm doing Vikings, I might find a particular website and then I can add that website as a tab and stick it to the top of my channel so that I don't have any of my learners getting distracted by what's on the internet but I'm sending them to the website that I want them to check out so definitely use tabs go and investigate that uh, for one note tags that was the to do and the important one you can search on them absolutely brilliant use section groups to organize your content um, insert files as printouts and then set the printouts or the images to a background so that they can't be deleted and um, use audio feedback my learners always love to hear my voice and it makes it super quick to do so what i might take about five or ten minutes for me to write or type i can just give a quick audio feedback super quick and I can do it when I'm walking around doing my shopping as well and um, so I can use immersive reader to listen to their stories and then I can give audio feedback for them really quick and have older pupils download the apps on their phones and um, it just makes it more accessible for them that was a top tip from Sarah Clark our other MIEE fellow in Scotland so those are the top tips if you have any questions please put them in the chat and um, please don't go um just yet there's a survey I've put the, in the chat I put the link in the chat please fill out the survey please redeem your code if you've got any questions please um tag us in Twitter follow us on Twitter have we got our Twitter handles there I don't think we have and um, so I'm just gonna put mine in the chat this is my twitter handle um or you can find us probably uh, if you find um tablet academy scotland twitter feed you'll find me there rose i can't remember yours off the top of my head it's rose jay lee oh i don't know why i can't remember that my goodness <laughs> me that's not tricky <laughs> there we go we are we're three minutes before time there we go dan has put in tablet academy um twitter handle as well please tw tweet and tag us and we'll definitely uh, give you a wee follow back and um, please fill out the survey. We love to hear your feedback and don't forget to redeem your code. Ah, oh, now I can breathe. <laughs> thank you very much for coming along tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope you have got something to take away and try. And my big um, top tip and piece of advice is just have a play. Just have a play, have a go. There's nothing you can break.